ओके थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट एंड विदा फॉर जॉइनिंग अस फॉर टुडे सेशंस टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द पोटेंशियल एंड द इंपैक्ट ऑफ इंडियन इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन बांग्लादेश एनर्जी सेक्टर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस विदा दिनकर Vidya is one of very few person I admire and one of the finest person I ever met. Vidya is based on Mangalore, a small city of Karnataka, India. She is the president of Indian Social Action Forum in South, which is working in seventeen uh, states all over the India. She is also uh, working as a coordinator of Growth Watch India. a local campaign and advocacy organization uh, she has a vast experience of almost 30 years at several civil, uh, civil society movements in india and overseas vidya is also very familiar face in uh, south asia also as she is working as uh, the international committee focal person at ngo forum on edb she has an active campaign against the large infrastructure and uh, also the fossil fuel industry which is damaging the social and environmental balance of our local ecosystems uh, uh, in previous years uh, she had a very successful campaign on mangalore refinery and petrochemicals uh, mrp and uh, uh, and she has also a strong neck on energy investment in india she is also monitoring the overseas investments of india in energy projects of bangladesh as well uh, currently she is active against the adani godda coal power plant and reliance lng based power plant in meghnaghat narayanganj so today we will uh, listen from her about the problems and potentials of indian investment in the energy sector of bangladesh so um, i think uh no more delaying further i would like to invite vidya dinkar for delivering her thoughts on that issue before that i would like to um, uh, like to remind some house rules like uh, please mute yourself while you are not talking and uh, make an asterisk or raise your hands uh, to put question you can also write it down in our chat box as well uh, so thank you that's all from me now it's your speaker thanks to him and we can also use the reaction button right hey yes. hot now clap now thumbs up issue so um hi as to him said i i live across the border and um, happy to meet all of you from the second session uh, that clean is conducting the house rules also say that keep yourself on mute if you're not speaking but if you want to say something very urgently please raise your hand and i'll give you the chance to uh, chip in um it won't be such a formal um, presentation and what am i supposed to talk about the challenges and the impacts of indian um Invest. indian investment indian energy investments in bangladesh right yes of course okay. yes thank you thank you so um tell me um both of us india and bangladesh share um, a lot of things in common right so um, and when it comes to even energy investments we've had um indian companies very active in construction and engineering in, um, as contractors in the bangladesh power sector for a long time so it's not like india is like fresh into bangladesh uh, bangladesh's power uh, sector and yet over the last 10 odd years we've had a lot of opposition um to energy investments from india primarily because um the finance and the push the sponsorship um has uh, has been both 
political and uh, and economic and this push is seen as being problematic by civil society on both sides um tell me what do we have in common a common treasure that we both um indians and bangladeshis treasure what is a common uh, treasure for both our countries. Sundarban. Sundarban, yes, the beautiful forest. And um, it's very, very important to, um, to Bangladeshis, but it's also important to us. It's home to the Royal Bengal Tiger. It's, um, uh, and, uh, and it's an international um, important biosphere reserve, right? Um, in, in India, it's an important biosphere reserve. It's a national park which means that it has the highest level of protection on the Indian side. And on the Bangladeshi side also, it has um, three protected forests. So uh, we have um, the, the Bengal tiger, we have dolphins, uh, and it's the um, largest habitat of the majestic Bengal tiger. And so many people's livelihoods actually depend on uh, the natural resources of the Sundarbans and millions actually on both sides, live and depend um, either directly or indirectly on the Sundarban. Um, and it really protects us from uh, increasing climate change. Uh, I won't even call it climate change. The, it, it, um, uh, the uh, extreme climate events in the climate emergency that we are already in, right? Like tropical cyclones, et cetera. So uh, more recently, um, as I said, over the last 10 years, we've been very concerned about one project which directly impacts, especially the Bangladesh side. And remember, this is a project that could not even come up on the Indian side because our, um, our laws in India uh, see that if you are um, putting up such a coal-fired power plant, this kind of project cannot even come up, would be considered illegal. Um, if if it's uh, in the what you call the exclusion zone or the buffer zone around a national park or a wildlife sanctuary, and how far? Tell me in terms of kilometers. How far is the Rampal uh, coal power plant from the Sundarban? That's my quiz question to all of you. In between ten kilometers. I think. About 10 to max 14, am I right? Mehdi is the walking, talking, a zooming encyclopedia on all things energy related in Bangladesh. Mehdi Bolo. So uh, in document, it's called uh, 14 kilometers, but uh, in reality, it's within 11 kilometers because just uh, if you cross the area of that power plant, uh, within half a kilometer, you will get that impact zone, uh, border of impact zone. Yeah. Right. And thank you. Even Mir, um, Mir Inamul Karun has said 11 to 12, say 10 to 14 kilometers. So it would be an illegality in my country. But my country is pushing such a project in your country. So the Maitri super thermal power project, um, which will devastate the Sundarbans, according to us, and the communities um, who depend so much on it, um, is a 1,320 megawatt uh, power project, which is um, pushed forward or uh, it's owned by and constructed by the National Thermal Power Corporation of India, NTP. Okay, it's already being constructed. They hope to finish it. They were saying they will finish it by next year, 2022, right? Uh, how are they? Let, let our Bangladeshi colleagues and team tell us, will they be able to complete it in, uh, in the time that they have said that they will complete it? So according to this document, uh, government document, they are supposed to come to the operation, commercial operation by December this year, but uh, fortunately, they will not be able to do that. Uh, and they again said that it will, it will come within April, March or April 2022. But again, fortunately for the campaigners, 
they will uh-huh. not be able to do that because so the march they, 2022 also they won't be able to keep yeah, so because, is there a new date mm, already set huh, because no, no they are trying to arrange the call required call from any countries but you know australia has uh, already decided to phase out coal uh, india is shaky to supply low quality coal here uh, mm-hmm. indonesia is in pressure to export more coal mm-hmm. and and uh, mozambique it's too far to get any coal from there yeah so That's coal it. doesn't want to come to um, bangladesh uh, but uh, you know, um, uh, the Bangladesh Power Development Board and NTPC have this marriage going on. And uh, NTPC has 15% equity in the Ramsal coal power plant. Um, the Indian Exim Bank is financing the project to the tune of about 13,000 crore Bangladeshi taka. Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, BHEL, which has always been in your country for a very long time, uh, is the EPC contractor. And um, so um, then there's the German-based Fitchner Consulting Engineers, which is the owner's engineer of the power plant. There are many other companies related uh, with the project, like Afcon Infrastructure, it's an engineering consultant. Bengal Tools Limited is um, there. Uh, it's constructing the coal conveyor belt. The dredging corporation of India is supposed to dredge the channel of Paso River. Power Mech uh, Projects Limited is the coal transportation consultant. Price Water Cooper is involved. So it, it, it can be a disastrous project on many levels. Um, about, uh, there is an estimate that about 960 ships uh, will fly through the channel of the ship and for sure. Uh, and uh, which is, of course, again, the important habitat of the Royal Bengal Tiger. Your agriculture and fish catch, we uh, think, will be affected by coal dust as coal is transported, will be affected by fly ash. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, there was this attempt to send coal from India earlier this year. I forget, was it two months ago, Mehdi, that they tried to uh, send coal? Yeah, um, yeah, a coal shipment, yes, and um, and and the Rampal coal project, if it actually gets completed and will begin operation, then will consume about thirteen thousand tons of imported coal daily, daily, huh? And uh, so you'll have river dredging, of course, and then you will have to create a huge coal ash pond, and if Indian coal is used. Um, then about three times over in terms of ash will accumulate because the ash content of Indian coal is quite high, 35% or so. Uh, Mercury and heavy metal content will increase in the water. Basically, our uh, Shundarbans will not be this thriving biodiverse environment as we know of it today. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's also the greater impact on climate change, um, millions of tons of um, uh, you know uh, greenhouse gases being emitted, carbon dioxide, um, and uh, and so the, the the coal dust itself, even while the coal comes to be burnt there near the Sundarbans, will destroy the fragile ecosystem, which is like a world. Ramsar a wetland site, it is a UNESCO heritage site, um, but who cares? Well, the people of Bangladesh do seem to care because in, um, uh, in 2013, about 20,000 people participated in what they call the first long march. Uh, and they marched really uh, around 250 miles from Dhaka to Rampal in protest of this coal fire power project. Um, it was under the National Committee and Anu Mohammed, uh, Professor Anu Mohammed, that they did so. Then there was a second long march in March of 2016 uh, with a lot of um, uh, street corner and village meetings along the way. Okay. So this is something that all of you must closely watch, must perhaps push back at Indian authorities that we do not want this kind of uh, project in our uh, UNESCO heritage site 
uh, the Sundarbans is too important to us. And, uh, and you're anyway giving, um, I mean, it's going to be a very expensive project together with the ecological and livelihood destruction. Uh, it's also not a very cheap project economically. Mm, and I'm not just talking about the eco services uh, and the cost of eco services of the Sundarbans, but also just the power itself is going to cost you around nine taka per unit. Would that be correct, Mahdi? Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, approximately nine taka. Um, and who knows, uh, you know, um, uh, how it will pan out. If nobody is willing to give you coal at this time, there are a lot of things and balls to juggle in the air. Any question vis-a-vis -vis or comment vis-a-vis -vis the, the Rampal coal fire plant, the Maitri Super project? Any questions? I can ask a question to Tuhin actually. Mm. That, that there is a study uh, came out just few days ago from the Kulna University, who is the vice chancellor now. He conducted uh -huh. this uh, study. Uh, he had some findings, which is conservative, but uh -huh. but what is the findings uh, from that vice chancellor of Kulna University? Yeah, to him, Bolo. Okay, the study is conducted, I mean, published in last July or August, I guess. We mm -hmm. said that 10% uh, of fly ash content is, uh, I think, uh, it can be resistible by the ecosystem. I mean, uh, beyond 10% of this concentration of fly ash in Sundarbans will be, can be uh, bad, not devastative, but can be bad for the germinations and uh, the growth performance of uh, Shundari, which is Heritaria forms, Brugaria gymnorhiza, uh, and Koran, which is Exocaria agalosa. And there are uh, four different mangrove species uh, he studied. And uh, the study said uh, that uh, the, if the fly ash contents remains below the 10% concentration, then it's fine. But above the 10% concentration, then the growth performance of several species could be hampered. So these are the things. So I think uh, I would like to say that this study is a very good initiative, as at least our academician, they are doing some research on the coal pollution of Sundarbans and surrounding areas, which is good. Absolutely. Most academicians try to steer clear of anything that they see can be um, uh, termed by the government as uh, being anti-government or anti-national. And definitely, I think, um, uh, you know, uh, this, this would be. But what is interesting is that if he's saying more than 10% would be a rather a challenge for the Sundarbans to keep. Um, oh, the lead researcher is a very close friend of the government. Well, then he's telling his government that he cannot, that we cannot have any kind of um, uh, coal from India because Indian coal will not keep uh, the fly ash content of, uh, less than 10%. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so interesting days ahead, and I think um, if everybody from the energy force can closely follow the Rampal project, that would be very, very good. So, our um, the next uh, big daddy uh, project, where uh, you actually won't have, um, you know, uh, you you will not have a power project in. Uh, Bangladesh. The power project will actually be in India, but all the power will actually go with a transnational, uh, trans country um, uh, supply line to Bangladesh. So, 1600 megawatts of power plant coal fired again in Jharkhand, um, in uh, one of the states in the east of India. 
um, and uh, and all the power will go to Bangladesh. Jaren wants to say, what was the push factor from India's side uh, to build Rampal here? Mehdi, isn't it a push and pull factor both? Uh, yeah, both. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, bolo, bolo. Mm. No, one of the thing is, uh, uh, let's let's be clear that uh, in 2010, we didn't have enough power to uh, supply for the uh, consumers, especially for the citizens. And uh, there was, you know, geopolitical interest of different countries, you know, still there are uh, from China, from Russia, from uh, Japan, from India. So it's a business interest, it's an economic interest of different countries. And you have, the Bangladesh also have a business interest in different countries. So that's not the problem. The problem is how you are, uh, you are, you know, making profit of what? Using which resources? So in two, 2000, from that 2010, you know, people started protesting the power plant because of the land acquisition, because of the environmental degradation because of the climate impact in future. So that's the agenda actually. So I, I think the push and pull factor is not the, uh, not the major issue. The major issue is why are you are, um, doing that and in which form, which is, which is the fuel for your uh, production. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mary. So, uh, um, yes, uh, Tuhin, is that the article, uh, I mean, is that the study by the researcher from Kulna University, yeah. Vice Chancellor? I just shared Thank it to anyone. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, please look through um, what scientists in your region are, um, are telling you and build up on that because there's much more to, um, to the whole project than what this says. And read up because... Rampal is one project which has been talked about. It's highly controversial. There's a lot that you can read up both nationally and internationally in Bengali, in English. Um, and, and therefore, that is one project that you can get plenty of information and, um, and you can organize programs. You will find interest in that. Perhaps you can have your own uh, street corner or other meetings on that. Yes. The other project that I wanted to talk to you was about a power plant which is coming up in Godda, in Charkhand, in India, set up by Adani. You must have heard about Adani, a crony capitalist who has really made it big uh, ever since the current government in India has been in power. Uh, so um, it may not be a rags to riches story, but it's a uh, rich to extremely rich story, um, very powerful. And um, he has managed to see that a coal fired plant is coming up, 1,600 megawatts, and all of it is going to be shared with the poor people of Bangladesh that are so bereft of all kinds of electricity that they need to depend on expensive energy coming to them all the way from India. Um, what do you think of that? Since you've had about three, four uh, sessions of the energy course, do you really think that Bangladesh is still this, uh, this land of poverty, uh, especially of energy poverty? What do you think? Can a project actually be um, pushed ahead saying um, Bangladesh is energy poor and therefore from India, we need to send them energy, electricity. Tell me your responses, because this is what we have been told. This is what even our politicians on both sides were saying in the beginning. That, and, and even now, Adani and his company are saying that Bangladesh needs this power, and therefore it needs to be sent. If Bangladeshis are quiet, then anything will be sold in the international market uh, in the name of helping Bangladesh. 
I think we are now in a position to help you because we are in over capacity. And recent studies say that till 2029, we didn't, uh, doesn't need any sort of new power plants to meet our demands. Thank you, Tuhin. And in fact, this is not just the Indians. Even the Australians are being told that this is all in the interest of the poor Bangladeshi because um, uh, Australia is facing stiff op opposition from its people for supporting Adani to mine coal in Australia. So uh, Adani is going to mine coal from indigenous people's lands in Australia is going to then take them to the port and then going to ship them all the way to India. Um, and then from the Indian port of Dhamra in um, Orissa, there's going to be a train track which will take this coal all the way to Godda in Jharkhand, the neighboring state. And there they will fire this coal, they will create the electricity and magically transport it across through a transmission line all the way into Bangladesh for your use. So not just the Indians, even the Australians who've been opposing uh, the mining of um, their lands for coal, um, and they're saying, we don't want this kind of dirty, uh, uh, you know the whole campaign of keep it in the ground. It's fossil fuels need to stay in the ground. And, uh, and, uh, and any kind of mining has a, has a terrible um, impact on water bodies and on health and livelihood of people who live around the mines. And this is indigenous people's territories who've been steadily um, campaigning against this. And they are being told, but no, no, no. It is to help the Bangladeshi. And, and remember that Bangladesh as a climate vulnerable country, as, uh, as seen as a less developed country, has a lot of sympathy uh, across the world. And therefore, they are always using that card of uh, showing your needs to actually service their own profit. Uh, Jaren says, I read somewhere that the construction plan of the Padma Bridge was going on from 2001. What I meant to say is the plan of building Rampal may be old, but why are we not pulling back from that place? Why Sundarbans? Why indeed, Jerry? So obviously, people power needs to be exerted a lot more so that fossil fuel power in the Sundarbans can be offset and, and, and cancelled. So uh, somehow, if you can get more of your people to actually um, go there, speak out loudly, say we will not uh, allow this to happen with the Sundarbans, and also show that economically it's bad, politically it's bad, and even as um, Bangladesh is the chair of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, I think Bangladesh leadership should also say we might have come this far from 2009, 10 till now, but at least now we can say no. Um, the, the latest IPCC report um, saying that we are hurtling towards destruction as a race could be um, uh, the peg that you use to convince and re-talk to your own government, which has been actually um, talking of cancelling a lot of projects. But they're saying, so a lot of projects in the pipeline are being cancelled by the Bangladeshi um, uh, power ministry, etc. But, but these that they feel have already gone ahead, um, they are not willing to roll back. I think a little more pressure, both national uh, from within and international, would be, risk, um, would be really required. So Adani Godda, uh, Godda is an area which had fertile agricultural land. There were indigenous people there, locals who staunchly resisted. Uh, Adani used all his power and wealth. He, he used police and he used goons to beat up villagers and to forcibly take over their land. They went to the high court. You know how these in South Asia, in your country and mine, some of these cases can take so long. The justice denied is, I mean, justice delayed is justice denied. 
So uh, we have the situation where people are losing hope. Uh, the the plant, just like Rampal has, um, has been constructed here, also the plant is um, almost all constructed, say 75, 80% of the plant is up. So I think the next stage is going to be the transmission line and actually the sending, uh, the testing and then the sending of the power to your country. This also needs to be opposed because it is, again, expensive power. It's 8.3 um, uh, taka, I think, that you will pay per unit, which is far in excess of what you pay for, uh, say, um, a local prakritic uh, um, um, dam. Uh, what, what you pay uh, is far less. It's about 6 taka. Mary, am I right? Uh, which no, one? A, uh, the other like, one? No, no, no. If you're buying uh, natural gas, what you call natural oh, gas in Bangladesh is um, energy. Is it six taka that you? Pay? No, 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 no. It's uh, domestic fossil gas. So uh, if you use domestic fossil gas, it's around three point three at most. Three point three taka. Yeah. Only three point three. And what do you pay for Adani's power from India? Is it eight point three? Yeah, yeah, uh, and 3.3 .3 maximum, uh, 2.1 exactly. to 3.3. .3. And 8.3 is minimum because yeah. you will again pay, I think, two taka more per unit. Yeah. yeah. So 8 to 10, 8.3 to 10.3 or 10.5 is what you will pay for Adani's power to come to you in Bangladesh. You guys are extremely rich. You want to make our businessmen who are already rich richer. So, so nice of you. Mm -hmm. So these are conversations that you must have with your government. Say, why are you going to make us pay that kind of money for, for energy, for electricity that they, we do not need? As Puheen said, you're already, um, uh, you know, energy surplus. You are not energy deficit anymore. And so why should you take on these kinds of expensive projects just to line the very deep pockets of Indian crony capitalists. Please think about this again and push your government to step away. I know that there is a power chase and one that is not in the public domain. Maybe you can have um, a, a sort of call for um, you know um, sharing the uh, PPA in the public domain. I think that is something that you must push because, for example, if you do want to buy um, any kind of energy or power from us in India, then take solar power or something, just in case you think that around the Sundarbans you cannot produce uh, cheaper solar power. There's no, I don't know. For whatever reason, if you think it's not possible, then take solar power. Solar power is becoming extremely cheap in India, about 2.23 uh, uh, rupees. So, um, so take that. Why the more expensive polluted uh, power, which is really the blood and the toil of the people of Buddha and the curses of the people of Buddha will come along with that power. So um, um, uh, I think um, somebody had said, um, and, and will not the price of coal, coal um, increasing? That, that coal that's coming from Australia all the way to India and then traveling to Goda, it's between 8.3 and 8.71 taka that you will have to pay. If the price of coal goes up, the price of electricity at your end will go up too. But there's a 127 kilometer transmission line for Buddha to Bahrampur on the border and then on to the national grid of Bangladesh that you will um, get. And the 8 million tons of coal per year will come from Australia. 200 million tons of coal in the lifetime of 25 years. SEPCO 3 um, is the EPC contractor and ONM contractor. Um, I think. Um, uh, Adani uh, is putting in some money, but most of it is uh, loans from Power Finance Corporation Limited uh, in India and Rural Electrification Corporation Limited. Two state-owned um, uh, corporations are financing the Adani project. Uh, Natesh, could you put 
your phone on silent, sorry. And then um, in um, this also, commercial operation is supposed to be um, pretty soon, January 2020. Has, have they given a new date for that? Because it's delayed from March of 2020. And because of the corona pandemic, they use the force majeure clause, right? They said, because of the pandemic, we are seeking more time. Um, Jan 2022 was the commercial operation. Are they going to keep to it? Maybe not, but soon enough? No, they, uh, they, okay, I am in Bangalore. Uh, yeah, force, force major means that the amount of money is going to be able to get the amount of money 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 to get the to a বিদ্যুৎ কেন্দ্রটা তৈরি করতে আরো কিছুদিন বেশি সময় লাগবে যে সময়ের মধ্যে আমি করতে চেয়েছিলাম সেটি পারবো না এটি বলতে হবে কারণ যে সময়ের মধ্যে তোমার করার কথা ছিল সেই সময়ের মধ্যে তুমি করতে না পারলে প্রতিদিন 1 মেগাওয়াটের জন্য 50 ডলার করে জরিমানা দেওয়ার নিয়ম আছে সো সে জরিমানা থেকে বাঁচার জন্য তুমি এরকম ডিক্লারেশন দেবে তো ওরা 6 মাসের জন্য ডিক্লারেশন দিয়েছে মানে হলো যে জানুয়ারি থেকে 6 মাস অর্থাৎ জুলাইতে চলে যাবে like that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you are muted, Lydia. Sorry. So after uh, July, you will be Amar Bangla Auto Porte to Koshto Hoy. Haroti Sar Nijer Deshe. What is that? Jalanir Ketre, Shayong Shampoo Nota, Shayong Shampoo Nota, or John Koretse. Arjun is money. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We are also, we are all super duper energy uh, sufficient and uh, more uh, desh. You, uh, I mean, Bangladesh and us. We don't need more coal fire plants. We are putting this up in Goda only for you, Bangladesh. And you are so, so generous that you are willing to pay Adani more money for it. What good neighbors we have. <laughs> so, so together with that, um, let me bring you to another project, which again, it shows your generous heart. There's another businessman that you're going to help very much, that you're already helping. Okay. Any guesses? Bolo Bolo? You know, we call our Sarkar sometimes Sudbuchki Sarkar, Adani Ambani Sarkar. Have you heard that? That this Sharkar of ours is an Adani Ambani Sharkar. Hmm. So a, um, the Ambani group has two brothers. The Ambani that is usually referred to together with the Adani is the elder brother who is, you know, the geo phone company, et cetera. He's a very big player. Yes. Reliance, exactly. Exactly. So uh, the Reliance Group is the Ambani Group. The Reliance Group um, uh, is a very, very big um, uh, corporate house. And it has also grown over the last few years. Um, again, another crony capitalist um, kind of um, uh, company. Now, the Reliance younger brother, um, his name is Anil Ambani. So he's not as rich as his older brother and not as savvy in business. So some of his businesses have not been too um, successful. Okay. Reliance Energy had um, a power plant uh, that they were setting up, a gas based plant in Samalkot in Andhra Pradesh in India. Well, Part of that plant, and they call it Module 1, um, this July was sold and transported to your country. So you have received um, an older gas fired power plant and module, and um, it has been sold. Now, it has been bought um, by um, a Bangladesh project, not a Bangladesh company because the Bangladesh project is also a reliance project. So Anil Ambani sells one um, module of his existing plant to another module, uh, I mean, to another project that he 
uh, has in Bangladesh. Where is this? It's in a place called Meghna Ghat, next to the Meghna River, about 20 kilometers south of Dhaka. So very polluted Dhaka will be even more polluted in the future because Meghna Ghat has this whole complex of fossil gas-based um, energy to be, um, to be set up. And 750 megawatts of this gas-based um, energy um, infrastructure is being set up with um, finance, 100 million, I think, from the Asian Development Bank. Then there's uh, Japanese funding, and JERA, a Japanese company, owns 49% of this of the Meghna Ghat 750 uh, megawatt um, uh, gas plant. Um, and Reliance Group owns 49. Reliance Group in India for many years has been struggling financially. They have been declared bankrupt by the courts, by the banks, et cetera. They have been defaulters with bank payments. They needed money very badly. So Bangladesh and this project in Meghna Ghat is helping them. So Ora A Shop Koishaniye and um, selling of this module one of the Samal Court um, power project, they are getting 1,500 crores, which they, are, they have then deposited with the U.S. Um, Exim Bank. Uh, they owed the U.S. Exim Bank. They've deposited that money there. And basically, you are helping uh, Reliance Industries, the younger brother, Anil Ambani and Reliance Energy to, uh, to actually float again. They were stinking. Bangladesh is helping them float. And they are floating now um, at Meghna Ghat next to um, Meghna River. So thank you very much for really helping all our very rich businessmen. Uh, we think you are very, very good. The commercial operation was supposed to be, the date was supposed to be July 2022. Um, there's supposed to be four power plants that come up and uh, an LNG terminal, which might have been shelved already. Uh, but the 750 megawatt reliance thermal power, I mean, sorry, gas, uh, fossil gas uh, power plant is the first. So the whole, uh, the whole little colony might come up, which means that Dhaka city is going to be more unlivable and unbearable, not just this traffic, but for all this pollution uh, due to the, ga the, the gas-based um, plants that are going to come up very, very close to Dhaka. So, um, question. Question. My very generous Bangladeshi neighbor. Any question? You can raise your hand or uh, you can just unmute yourself. Oh, and then most of you are another advantage. Yeah, why don't you uh, speak up? Tamil also has a question. Tamil, uh, after Mir Imanul, Mir, do you want to um, say you can speak in Bengali also? Okay, um, uh, we have listened to the bad effects of these projects you're saying. And my question is that uh, can, we get, can we get back from these projects now? Like, isn't it too late? Or uh, wouldn't it be more efficient uh, to suppress the bad effects rather than to shut down the whole project? I mean, what's your take on that? You know, uh, sometimes uh, when you uh, have like um, gangrene in the leg, okay, what do you do? You cut off the leg. You just think, oh, if it's my toe. I don't want to cut off the toe. It's been with me for so long. It, I will not be able to balance my foot properly if I cut off my toe. Uh, but then the gangrene starts uh, really eating up your whole foot and then your leg. And, and, it, and that may, it can mean that you can be very, very badly affected long term. So what does the doctor say? He says, cut off that toe. Do it now. 
before it's too late. I think all fossil fuel investments across the globe, their time to hold up and get out is now. If you read recent reports and older reports, science, the science is very clear. We cannot keep burning fossil fuels. We cannot keep digging them out. We cannot keep pumping them out and using them um, and, and putting in more emissions in the air and think that somehow we'll mitigate the impact of all this kind of activity for energy security of our country, that we'll somehow minimize the impact and we'll somehow go. But it's like a gangrene eating up your society, your people, your community, their livelihood, their health. And the long-term impact is really felt more keenly by countries like Bangladesh. So I think Bangladesh does not have that option to say, Amra dekhe nebo, dekhi kichu mitigation measures we'll put in place some environmental things, we'll catch some of the flu gas, we'll, we'll, we'll handle the coal dust better, we'll, we are the fly ash we'll use in bricks. HR shop will not work anymore. You're poisoning your waters, you're poisoning your people, you're poisoning your Sundarbans, you're poisoning the Bengal tiger. And the Bengal tiger is really the apex of the whole habitat, which is the Sundarbans. Your Bengal tiger goes, I'm so sorry. Then very soon, other, other um, kinds of um, uh, flora and fauna will also disappear. Just like the Bengal tiger is very important for the forest, for the Shundarvan's forest, the, for the, uh, for the um, water. It is uh, the fish that are important. And the fish will also disappear with all that coal dust, with all that fly ash in the apple. So there is no option, I think. We need to take hard decisions now. We should have taken it five years ago. But if we didn't take it five years ago, if we could not force our governments to listen to us in 2010, during the long march in 2013, during the long march in 2016, then now, now your government is sitting uh, on the top of the uh, Climate Vulnerable Forum this is the time to re-talk with your government, to reconvince your government, to make them see reason. This is what I think. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Samuel. Mehdi, do you want to go with Miri Manu's um, question, please? I mean, I'm very tired. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little not well, so I'm trying. So I'm our... Amar uh, right hand lieutenant Mehdi Hassan Kolbeya. <laughs> Thank you, Vidya. Still, uh, Bharater, uh, Koyla, Kingba, fossil fuel, take a very ashar kono pori kalpana nee. Ekono pori jonto kono pori kalpana nee. Kintu pori kalpana ekta rashtiyo bhabe ase. Abhantarin biniyogar kisse je Bharat agami uh, dosh bachore 2030 shaler motte. 25,000 megawatt uh, bidut solar atoba renewable theke anbe ar 2040 saler tara 40% te pouchabe 40 shotansh e pouchabe kintu bohisto je biniyog orthat european union kingba ekhon kichuta গত জানু মার্চের দিকে যুক্তরাজ্য একটা নতুন নীতিমালা করেছে যে তাদের কোনো প্রতিষ্ঠান যদ বাইরে বহিষ্ট কোনো বিনিয়োগ বিশ্বত জীবাশ্য জ্বালানিতে করবে না কিন্তু এখনো আমেরিকা কিংবা ভারত কিংবা জাপান এরা কোনো সিদ্ধান্তে আসেনি এই গত তিন দিন আগে শুধুমাত্র চীন একটা সিদ্ধান্তে এলো যে তারা কয় বহিষ্ট কোন বিনিয়োগ করবে না আমেরিকার আগেই সিদ্ধান্ত আছে এই বিষয়ে কিন্তু পুরো জীবাশ্ম জ্বালানিতে যে বিনিয়োগ কতটুকুন করবে করবে না সে বিষয়ে কোন উদ্যোগ এই সব স্পেস বিশেষ ভাবে যেটা অগ্রসর উন্নয়নশীল দেশ ভারত চীন রাশিয়া ব্রাজিল দক্ষিণ আফ্রিকা এদের 
kono niti mana nahi yes but this is a landscape thank you mehdi this is a landscape which is changing so quickly because the push factor on getting coal off the off the grid um, and 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 you know energy systems which are more um, sustainable uh, is so so strong right now so coal is a dirty word other fossil fuels are still being used they are talking of fossil gas as a bridge fuel it is not a very con, um, a popular concept with medi and as etc but some some people still say na 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 bridge fuel is uh, the thing they fossil gas use for ajay but we think that the methane emissions are really bad for the environment and um, and we should not have this kind of fossil fossil oil uh, also is something we oppose but these are um, these are uh, evolving times you are in the middle and taking an energy course at a very important time where you can see change happening virtually every month positions that were taken as hardened positions by financial institutions by international financial institutions by development banks by other banks and by countries uh, are changing so rapidly uh, considering the whole um, Uh, the climate emergency and the push by people's movement and groups on them so uh, so it's an exciting time to be taking an energy course trying to understand what is happening in your own country and what is happening around the world and um, and to keep up with the shifting um, uh, position that people are taking and 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 we have to keep pushing to see that everyone takes a more progressive and um, you know anti fossil fuel and pro people um, and environment stance are okay to um, comments suggestions um, and uh, questions তবে তুহিন আমরা শেষেও চলে এসেছি একদম পাঁচটা আটান্ন বাজে you have taking um an energy course but a fossil fuel investments have real impact on communities and our environment and therefore listen to the people uh, listen to the people try to find out the real impact of these projects on the ground and and be a voice for that it's only when you see it real uh the impact for real that you can speak convincingly and convince your own governments or even international groups to get out of fossil fuel investment if you want to be an advocate to try and change the way the 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 world is unthink unthinkingly going forward with fossil fuel investment then it is your duty to listen more carefully and to see more closely what is happening around where there are fossil fuel investments and to to leverage that knowledge and understanding up to convince uh, the people in power who are taking these decisions that they need to step away from fossil fuel investments i hope we can do that together india and bangladesh uh, civil society and people and i hope you will do it with a lot more power in your own country thank you so much vidya definitely we will do we will uh, uh, do our fights and our campaigns against this dirty fossil fuels and this sort of dirty investments in our country and also in south asian region so i would like to thank uh, vidya dinkar for uh, her active participation and delivering a very thoughtful speech to all of us and those who are very much powerful and motivational i guess so uh, thank you very much
so we are closing this uh, session here uh, we will meet in next friday at the same time 5 pm bangladeshi time uh, with mr jakir hussain khan khan about the sdgs and uh, paris agreement and the energy sector of bangladesh till then thank you so much and stay safe